mm. what they were aware of, which um, from what I can see, um, when Henry was put in jail in the first episode for that short amount of time Mm -hmm. um he was reading library books he was a very avid reader um, of um books and he also got put on the work of uh sort of filing i think it was like filing some of the criminals cases and stuff like that he got put in charge of those sort of things in some like unsolved cases yeah they sort of put him in like in like the admin room to deal with all that and um what he was doing was he was researching he was using that time as research essentially so when he was looking at why people were escaping the police all the time one of the things that he found was that if you move across the state line um after you commit a crime it's very unlikely you're going to get caught for that particular crime because you're in a different place of jurisdiction. Yeah. They're not going to be looking for you at this particular moment in time as well. Uh, this is why when, you know, in the 70s and 80s and 60s and things before, there was a lot more serial killers as active like this. Um, yeah. Because the communication between the different states and different police departments wasn't wasn't as good. post that. Yeah. Um, so he sort of figured that out. And this is sort of something that they would um, they would do. When they were doing this hitchhiking thing, one uh, victim, apparently, uh, was found dumped in a field completely nude. Uh, she'd been stabbed 35 times in the chest, uh, the neck, the arms, and the back. 35 <sighs> times. That's a lot. That's fucking a lot. That's pure anger, that. That's it really is pure anger. Or fun. I mean, they seem to have a lot of fun doing this. Enjoyment, uh, right? I don't know. They, pr- I, I get the vibe. They're uh, they are fucked up, so I really don't know. Yeah. Uh, deep cuts have been made along the inside of her arms and from the middle of her chest down to the pubic bone. Uh, both nipples had also been cut off and also removed. Fuck. Oh yeah. If you didn't think that, because um, obviously the first episode of this was kind of uh, light on the gory, gruesome details, um, it does gradually get worse for people. I'm not looking forward to the third part. No. Oh, <laughs> no. the third part. Well, I'll let you know just now, there's a part in the third part that I've got, and I'm really debating whether or not I should do it or not, or describe this part, because it's very, very gross. But oh, that'll no. be... That'll be for part three for you, honey. Um... According to uh, the police, Henry and Otis were responsible for up to four or five murders in each state uh, before then moving across state lines to avoid detection. Um, apparently on one uh, on more than two occasions, um, the pair uh, committed several murders in a single day. How is that even possible? To do several murders in a single day? Yeah. Um, I, I guess... I guess Several it, is more than two, so... Yeah. I, uh, without getting detected, like, caught. Yeah. It, I don't see how it's possible. Uh, like I said, they were doing this stuff in um, locations which were uh, remote. remote. Yeah. No witnesses. Uh, no people there. The two monsters were unstoppable. Between them, they'd already racked up a body count higher than either Dennis Nielsen, Eileen Warnos, or Jeffrey Dahmer. With such a lengthy and violent trail of blood left behind them, surely the pair would be caught out soon. But uh, this was only the beginning. One night, while finishing up after a kill, Henry and Otis were approached by a strange man. The pair were obviously dubious as to his motives. However, the stranger then did something totally unexpected. He made them an offer. Henry and Otis were about to become contract killers, but there was just one condition. You have to join our religion, and once you join, there is only one way out, the stranger told them. What kind of religion? Henry asked suspiciously, to which the stranger then replied, It's called the Hand of Death. And that, my friends, is part two of our three-part series covering Henry Lee Lucas and Otis Toole. Uh, In part three, uh, we're going to be looking at the two men's participation in the cult known as the Hand of Death, uh, along with wrapping this whole uh, sick saga up in its shocking and controversial conclusion. Uh, Trust me, as I mentioned earlier, uh, part three is not for the faint 
of heart. Oh, no. What is that? I, I, for some reason, I thought you was going to say, like, um, Heaven's Gate when you started saying it. I was like, what? Oh, you thought we were before. going to Heaven's Gate? Yeah. Uh, no, we were not going to Heaven's Gate. Uh, this is a cult which is uh, very different from Heaven's Gate. Uh, a lot more brutal, uh, arguably, than Heaven's Gate. Well, no, they are fucking... I'd, I'd say they're... Yeah, they're, all, they're a lot more brutal than fucking Heaven's Gate. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is this is uh, taking a little crazy turn, right? It really is. I, wa- I want to know who this guy is. I know we're going to find out more about him. Who the stranger like, yeah. is. Well, Alan, the other crazy thing is, is that, well, you're going to have to wait because I actually think I've done something that no one else has done. I think I may have found out who this strange man actually is. What? I think I may have cracked the case. <laughs> Honestly? <laughs> Do you think uh, you might know who, who, who it could be? Uh, no, and I couldn't. Uh, no, maybe, maybe, maybe. Well, wouldn't it be if it, that is the case? Shouldn't you like go and tell some police somewhere? No, Alan, because there are reasons why we would not inform the police of this particular character. Ooh. Oh no, I don't like this. What if they like hunt us down and get us? They won't. They won't. Uh, they won't and I'm not I haven't cracked the case but there is there's loads of cool things I know that this episode seems like it's probably just a teaser trailer for episode 3 <laughs> but um, because of the length of um, of this story it's insane so I had to split up into certain parts mm. we needed to learn Henry Lee Lucas's story we needed to learn Otis's story we needed to know the start of how they got together then we needed to jump into the juicy bits. And the thing is, oh, it's so hard to be a storyteller, Alan. It's such a hard life. In <laughs> honesty, you are actually doing a pretty good job with this. I'm trying my best. Uh, if people want to leave feedback as to how best we could do this sort of stuff, please, and every single episode, we encourage it. So if you don't leave <laughs> feedback, <laughs> you've only got yourself to blame, really. You're just letting us run loose with this. <laughs> We're like a, a couple puppies off a leash, just do whatever just the fuck we want. A bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I know this episode might be a little bit shorter than the other ones, but it's just for the fact of... If I'd started talking about this call and then it goes on for a bit, then I have to stop halfway through because of the timing of that. It just seems disjointed for me. Do you dig? I'm not looking forward to next week. <laughs> episode three is epic. It is epic. And to oh, be honest no. with you, episode three, considering this one might be actually quite short, um, episode three might be just a little bit over time. So what we're lacking in today's episode, you're definitely going to get in next week's as well. Um, that's still not making me look forward to it. I'm scared. When we'll we get... talk about when, when we mention any kind of cults, I am scared they're going to so happen to listen to the podcast. And track us and, down. And, yeah, and track us down and kill us. Especially when I might be actually naming the leader of the cult, Please which no don't. one else has ever done, baby. Well, no. It's... My name's not really Alan. Some people have... his The, the cult leader's name is in this, but um, I think I may have found who it might be. In real, real life, like, like yeah, I'll, I'll tell you in part three. Uh, that's enough of that um, teasing people. Uh, enough of the full <laughs> play. We're gonna dive uh, straight in next week and uh, fuck the shit out of this story. Uh, Alan, maybe not the right analogy to use. Uh, I would have used that. Probably. To be fair. So it's been a long day. Uh, <laughs> well, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this episode, everyone. I know it has a little bit, a little bit short. Sorry if you're disappointed with that. Uh, remember, give us plenty of feedback uh, if you're on iTunes or uh, Spreaker app or um, Spotify or anything. Uh, leave us some feedback. Um, also, uh, follow us on Twitter at Murderland Pod and also Facebook Adventures in Murderland and give us feedback there as well. It's very much appreciated. We are screaming out for feedback because we want to know if we're doing a good job bad job um, we are slowly getting the feedback though we people, are people seem to say we're doing a decent job which I'm yeah. fine with but if there's things people don't like that'll be good I'd as like well. to know that as well yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay well that's everything so ladies and gentlemen boys and girls and everybody in between thank you very much once again for listening I have been Mike James and I've been Alan. And make sure to tune in next Wednesday for even more Adventures in Murderland. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.